package manager so that it's integrated with your system. Anyway, OpenOffice.org, if you have not already watched the first video for the uh, word processor, OpenOffice.org is a freely available office suite. It is like Microsoft Office, only without the $400 price tag. It's free to use. It does have some limitations, but it, other than that, it can do almost every single thing that Microsoft Office can do. It comes with the spreadsheet program, a word processor program, a database program, a presentation program, etc., etc. I will not be covering the database as that goes, in my opinion, beyond the scope of the novice user to begin with and would actually fall under the category of database management systems because it would cover data relations and things like that. So I will not be covering a tutorial on it. And I will not be covering one on presentation software because I just don't think it's useful. <laughs> I might later if I get free time, but right now I have no free time. All right, this is the spreadsheet program from OpenOffice. It's called Calc, obviously, short for calculator. Now, again, this is for absolute beginners who, by looking at this, would have absolutely no clue what this is or what it does. The word, uh, the spreadsheet is meant to do embedded calculations to where you just type data in and it calculates results for you and it's most commonly used in offices for bookkeeping and computation of statistical data and timesheets is my biggest use for them anyway what we're going to do here is walk through some of the most basic features and then I'll give you a little bit of an advanced example that you can actually use in your day-to-day -day life. That way by the time I'm finished with this tutorial you will be able to use this somewhat competently. Now what you have here are columns. Column A, column B, column C, column etc etc and once it gets to Z it starts doubling the letters. Like You'll have AA and then well show you AB, AC, AD, all the way down. It'll always continue. It never runs out. And then what you have here are rows. And it's the same applies for numbers. The rows, are they never run out. Now, it's important you understand the concept of tabular data because it's the whole basis behind how you're going to formulate your calculations. First off, let's format this to where it's a little more readable. Hit Control A on your keyboard to highlight all the cells, and the cell is this area between, or the area in a specific row, or rather column. Columns are also known as fields, especially those of you that are familiar with databases. A, a cell is the area that lies within a range of a column and a row. So all these areas you could type data in, those are cells in this table. So hit Control A to highlight all the cells, then go over here to the row numbers and get right between the rows to where you get a double arrow cursor so you can adjust the row to make it a little bit more readable. There we go. Now we got big fat cells we can type into. All right. Now what we're going to do here is a really basic example. First, you, first I want to point out that you can type as much as you want and you are not limited to the space of a single cell as you see it overflows into other cells now this does not mean that you overwrote anything in that cell for example we type that into cell D and row 1 so technically it would be D1 well if we wanted to put something in D2 we could and D1 would just be hidden. It would not be overflowed anymore. It would not be overwritten. It would just be hidden. The overflow would be hidden. For those of you web developers, it's a familiar uh, concept. Anyway, if you would like to merge them so that they are all one, it's kind of like the tables issue with the word uh, processor. You just highlight multiple cells and select this merge option. Now if you have data in more than one it's going to ask you which cells data you want to keep and which cells do you want to dump because you're merging different cells with, that have data in them into one cell you're going to be losing something so it's going to ask you if you want to keep the one in the first cell 
we're going to click yes. Now you see all of it has been merged into the first cell. Actually, you didn't lose the other data in the other cell. It's all been merged into that one cell. So no more lines to separate them. It's all one cell now. All right. That's just the basic part. And, and then you can do that. Obviously, you see me do it horizontally, but you can also do that vertically. And you're not able, if, you, if your selection, if you, one of your cells spans more than one column, then your vertical selection will also include the length of that column. As you see, we just went up in our selection, and it's only one column, the column D, but we're going D4, D4 and 3, D4, 3 and 2, and then when we get to 1, because this cell is four columns wide, our selection just grew to four columns wide. So always remember that's how that works. All right, now that's just some basic little text formatting. Also, you can make your stuff bold, centered. You get a lot of the common options you see in your word processors. It's just to make it easier for you to look at your data. It has absolutely nothing to do with the purpose of the application. The purpose is for mathematical computations and calculations. Now, now we're going to start actually using this application for what it can be used for. Okay, and cell, let's uh, erase all that. Actually, let's not undo that. I like that. All right, we'll say in cell D2, we're going to put the number 4. And you to insert data into it, you just click the cell. You don't have to double click. And then you hit enter when you're done. And then in cell E2, we're going to put, actually, to show you how this works, we're going to move the next piece of data over here to G4. Bingo. No, I'm just playing. Anyway, um, G4, we're going to put 96 and then hit enter. Now if you want to change data at any time you can click on the cell one time and start typing a number to overwrite what was in it or you could double click and then edit what was in it. So remember single clicking does not put you in the cell with the cursor to append or change or edit the data. Single clicking overwrites the data if you start typing. Double clicking will actually put you a cursor inside the cell so you can choose what data you want to uh, where you want to start editing at. Alright, now here's where you get to the neat stuff. If you click on another cell, for example, we'll use I2. Now in I2, we want to see the results of D2, that's column D, row 2. We want to see the results of Actually, let me make this bigger because by the time I get done transcoding this video and Google gets done doing its transcode, you're probably not going to be able to read any of this. All right. So if we want to add D2 with G4 and we want the results to display in J1, you click in J1 and then you write a function in J1 that adds those two things and displays the results. Now this will probably sound alien to most of you. I don't use applicate. I don't even use Office applications. I don't know my way around them very well. I know enough to teach the beginner. It's like the deaf leading the blind. But I know when I first come into these, it was a little bit different. But what we're going to do is this is a function bar right here. If you place your cursor in this bar, you can start writing a function for J1 or whatever thing you clicked. If we want J3, click J3, click